What a great way to travel. An open top Swansea bus. Ooh, so bracing, so refreshing. Here are all the kids. Where are you going to first? The castle. The castle. Oh, I love a castle. You got all your gear. Come along. Come on, sir. Better get them ready for the trek up the castle. Do you know, one thing I've always wanted to know about Russell, the castle... I insist you come with me and find out about the history of the Mumbles Railway. Oh, it's obviously a stick-up. I'd better go. OK, kids. <laughs> See you later. Look, Mr Highwayman, who are you? I'm Tony Cottle of the Mumbles Railway Society. Oh, but what have you got to do with a horse and carriage? Well, this carriage was used to carry passengers from the Mumbles train oh. up into Gower. Can I get in? You can. Very swish. Well, let's go. Tally ho, Mrs. Isaacs. So tell me, Tony, how did it all begin? Well, it was the first passenger railway in the world. Started in 1807, and it was horse drawn from Swansea to Oystermouth. And it was a wonderful sight coming across the bay with these horse drawn cars. But of course, there were robbers about. And when I held you up today, those guns were used actually on the, on the railway to guard the passengers from robbers. So there were robbers in those days. And did that carry on all the way through the oh, horse-drawn yes. period? Oh, yes, all through the horse-drawn period. But, of course, the heyday of the railway was the uh, steam railway, and that was fantastic, carrying 1,800 passengers at a time. Goodness me, and that was from Swansea right the way down to... to Oystermouth. To Oystermouth yes. itself. And did it go down to the Mumbles? Oh, not until later, no. But um, that was the heyday, the steam, and it was wonderful. And at um, Blackpill, that's halfway, the conductors used to be out there throwing all the money over to their wives. And um, the wives would be out with their aprons, and the money would be collected. <laughs> and when the um, men died the, years ago, their wills, they left more than the, um, the owners of the railway. So they were all <laughs> on the fiddle? All on the fiddle, even in those days. What yeah. happened then after you got to the steam? Oh, well, after the steam, there was electric, electric cars, and it carried six million passengers a year. And that, that was really wonderful. But, of course, the cars came, and um, the railway started to run down. But they, they didn't keep it on at all. And uh, it was, it was marvellous to, to think that you could travel on the world's first passenger railway. But it closed in 1960. 1960. 1960, and oh, there was a wake that night. The rain poured down here, not far from where we are now. And it poured down, and they carried a coffin through the streets of Mumbles, and the body was floating in the coffin. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, and they had the last post, and uh, oh, it was, it was a sight to see it. What happened to all the trains when it shut? Oh, they were destroyed. One was sent up to Middlesbrough, and, but I'm afraid that's been vandalised, so there's nothing left, only in Swansea, just uh, the front half of the train, which is very sad. One thing I must agree with you with, I don't think you can beat the good old days. No, not indeed. <laughs> Any clues to the past? Jot it down, OK? How are we getting on then? How are we doing? We well? meet again. Hello, Russell. Hi. 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 How are you doing? Hi. 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 Oh, who built this castle, do you reckon? No one. What, all of them? No. no. Well, there must have been one. Nobody no. really knows who built the castle, but William de Breos lived here in the 1280s, and he was said to be real, really cruel to the Welsh people who hated him. What else have you found out? After that, the, um, the Mowbray family lived here and they developed it into more of a home-like. Oh, Mowbray, they make the pork yeah. pies, don't they? <laughs> Is that the same ones? <laughs> so, why was the castle built here? It's, uh, it's, it's on a good, good view. view. Good view? And what else about it? It's on a hill. That's right, so you could see all around it. That's why the Normans built the castle here, to keep the keep the Welsh in control. They subjugated the Welsh and kept everybody in order in control, didn't they? Do you reckon? Yeah. What do you think of the Normans? Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do some more discovering? St Thomas Patrol, forward. <laughs> You seen this, Richard? Yes. They'd see all the enemy ships coming in from Swansea Bay and things, and all the Welsh people coming in. That's right. So they'd know when they were attacking. You've got over there Swansea Bay, 
And over there, Mumble's Head, and that's the lifeboat station that we're going to go and see, isn't it? That's later yeah. on. And, oh, wow, it's really, really good up here. What are you going to do now? Well, we've well, we got more the church. Church? church. That's down there, the church, isn't it? It's big. Yeah. And I think it's about the same age as the castle, because probably attached with it, because they were very religious with the castle and the church. They could go to church every day. Well, I'm going to go down and have a look around the town now. So I'll leave you to do what you're going to do. All right? Yes. See you later. I really like oyster mouth and mumbles. There's a salty, briny, invigorating feel coming right off the sea. And up the back there, there's little narrowed lanes, ever so quaint little fishermen's cottages. Shows there must have been a thriving fishing industry here at some stage. And now the Swansea folk come over and have a really good time. I'm Russell. Oh, it's Owen Money here, the funny name. Come on down, Owen. <laughs> How's it going, Russell? Not so bad at all. Is this your yacht? Yes, this is winning the America's Cup next year. Do you think it's going to win? Well, it won't come last. <laughs> I think with your name, we could afford it something better than well, that. Well, yes, maybe. Do you like oyster mouth? Oh, and well, the beach is near the sea, and the, the rain's warm. <laughs> is that a posh place? Oh, they've got a bowl of fruit here where nobody's out, you know that, don't <laughs> Oh, they take the fish and chips home in briefcases. Oh, oh it's a marvellous place. The seagulls fly upside down, oh. and the Samaritans are ex directory. Do you find this place bracing? Oh, absolutely, Russell. They said it's good for asthma. I was here a fortnight, I had it. And have you been coming here long? Oh, many, many years. Actually, the first time I ever stayed here was in a boarding house. I was in a pamphlet, five minutes from the sea. Aye, by telephone. <laughs> what about the sea? Does it get to you? Oh. Oh, what do you mean? Sometimes rough, sometimes smooth? Oh, it makes me sick. <laughs> but I love fishing as well, you see, Russell. Actually, I was on the pier this morning. There was these two Irish fellas fishing off the pier. And one said to the other, Hey, Paddy, I've just caught a whale. He said, what kind of whale? He said, a bicycle whale. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw them. I think I know the ones you mean. Yes. Great big club over the water in Port Talbot. What's it like over there? It's absolutely fabulous. You know. Club there, bounces outside, throwing them in, and uh, <laughs> you can get drunk over there for hundred. <laughs> went to Aberavon, and I went went on the beach. I said to this fella, uh, "Can you hire the donkeys?" He said, "Aye, ah, a screw under the saddle." <laughs> <laughs> what sort of things they do over here in Oystermouth for fun? Oh, some cl clubs, yeah, man. I did a club across the road there once. Go oh, hard crowd, man. They booed me on. I said, am I singing too near the mic? And the fella said, no, you're singing too near the club. <laughs> but I tell you what, if you go over the club now, there's some right dead bangers over there. Oh, they're having rehearsal, are they? are having rehearsals, oh, aye. Well, I'll go two head bangers in one. <laughs> I'll leave you back with your ship. Oh, all the best, Russ. Right? <laughs> Tell again. Tell <laughs> Good, yeah? Yes, it was very good. What do you call that? I've got an old French on you. What do you French. call yourself? We are called Captain Otto and his Umpa Band. Yeah. You must be the famous Röschel Grunt. That's right, that Röschel Grunt. Of, yes, this yes. is what I said, Röschel Grunt. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Very, that we know good. of even in our little village of Mimbelstern in Bavaria. Oh, and... Yeah. We are from this little village which is twinned with your village of Mumbles, yeah? Oh. Is it anything to do with the way you speak? No, nothing to do with the way we speak, but it is a common market initiative, yeah? yeah. We are part of the Vine Lake. Oh, you're yeah. part of the Vine part Lake? Part of the Vine Lake, yeah. So what yeah. are you doing here in Oystermouth? Well, we come across because we are twinned with you, and we come across because we feel that perhaps in Oystermouth, yeah, there is a lack of serious and good music. What do you think of your own music? What do we think of our own music? We think that it is typical, yeah, of the South Bavarian uh, traditions, yeah? yeah? Traditions such as the ritual treading of the peas, yeah, in mm. Bavaria. Mm. You know the famous poem, of course. Yes, I, I know it well. Absolutely. Mm. Autumn leaves are falling fast. The streets are getting slushy. 
Yes. In Bavaria, the peas are hard, but soon they will be mushy. Mushy, yes, mushy. Now you yes. Poem. Yeah. I heard that in actually. Blackpool, actually, and they're now selling your mushy peas. Is this right? Yo, well, we it? are not surprised because they are very, very good. Yeah. We play music for the sighting of the first Wiener Schnitzel in spring, for oh, example. Oh, really? Venus Schnitzel, is it the same Venus Schnitzel as in the planet? Uh, Venus Schnitzel rising, Rising, yeah, yes, yes, absolutely. as in Venus As schnitzel. in Venus Schnitzel, yes, yeah. The schnitzel right. bit is around the Venus, absolutely. I see, right. This is very good, yes. You must be a very, very knowledgeable person, Mr. Grund. Well, I am. I am a very knowledgeable yes, person. Which is, but I wonder how other intellectuals find you. I mean, what attracts them to you? Well, if you would like, instead of us drawing an audience, yeah, mm. if you would like to join in and play with us, we yes. would be very happy for you to come and play the That'd Schmimbles with us. Oh, Schmimbles, Mimbles, what does it matter? Right, I'll have a bash. Come on. We are honoured, Herr Grund. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just smash them together, yeah? Is this the initiation? This is it. What's the name of the tune? <laughs> Well, I'm going to leave you now to your uh, sausages and beer, hadn't I? Yes. I'm going to go for more traditional oyster now, fair. Okay, okay. Okay, don't. Right. In the words, in the words of the poet. Yeah. Auf Wiedersehen, pet. Auf Wiedersehen, okay. Herr Jungs. Auf Wiedersehen. Oh, Auf Wiedersehen. Well, boys, look what's coming here. A little bit of what you fancy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oysters, eh? Yeah, look I at mean that. the oysters, of course. Oh, oh yeah. Look at the waitress. Oh, right. oh well. <laughs> Better all done oysters. Just hey, the oysters. oysters. Oh, my God, last time I had oysters at Chesapeake Bay. Chesapeake Bay. And look, yeah. and look at this. Oh, Jesus. Irish champagne. Right. Irish champagne, God. there we are. Tom Davis's brown bread. Yeah, right. Oysters, what Oops. more could you want? Now, my two companions with my oyster mouth tea are Puss Thomas and Gil Jones. And, uh, were there any oysters in Oyster Mouth? Plenty. Oh, plenty, plenty. yes. Plenty. A hundred boats stretching for oysters, so the mumbles. But with pollution and uh, disease amongst the oyster beds, it uh, died out, like you say, in the 20s. Well, then, and I mentioned the last one was the Rising Sun, did you, for years? Yes, the secret and the Rising Sun were the last yes. two boats that were dredging. All gone for now. oysters, but they, it's all finished now. And were they good? Oh, what? Excellent. Look at all the big families in Mumbles. <laughs> the aphrodisiac. Yeah. That's all they yeah. <laughs> Not much money, plenty of oysters, and large families, because yeah. they do. They, they really are something, you know. Well, are you going to try some of these? Well, well I will, anyway. Well, I don't know if these are Colchester, Whitstable, or Oystermel. Or whatever they are. Whatever they are, you boys. don't mind. Oh, no, 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 You're going to step lively after these if they're in aphrodisiac. <laughs> Aren't you both? My God, don't I'm slide. feeling the effect already. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're in Mumbles, Oystermouth. Is it part of Swansea? Is there a difference? Well, it's hmm. part of Swansea and the brother, but I mean, we're different. We are, we are us, and they are we're them. We're From special. the other side of Blackpill Bridge, it could be anybody. <laughs> and we're the special, tricks the Swansea right? people get up to just to become mumbles men. It's special these days. That's well, right. They do anything. I've been here 65 years. I'm not a mumble lad yet. He's not a mumbles man, but he was presented to the mumbles people <laughs> like the Prince of Wales was presented to the people of Wales, couldn't speak English or anything like that. <laughs> So there we are. So he was brought here as a prince for mumbles like sort of thing. Tell me, what's the difference between a Swansea Jack and a mumbleite? A Swansea Jack, they, well... <laughs> foreigner, can't, foreigner. For, they're foreigners. Foreigners. They're not like us at all. We are <laughs> us. The dream. This is the promised land. 
And we are the chosen race, the chosen people. Oh, we were? Yeah, we yes. Mumbles is a rocky place. Our church, it has no steeple. The house is built of old shipwreck <laughs> and God's own chosen people. Of course, the Swansea people would say, damn deceitful people. But that's a lie, isn't quite it? Quite right, oh, quite right. I take it. It is, but it's God's own chosen quite people. Right. What about the dialect, Puss? Is it any different from that over in Swansea? We've got our own dialect, but... Uh, like Dying I'd... out the puss. Oh, yes, mm. I'd say to Gilbert. Now, I wouldn't say, how are you? If I say, how are you? Yeah. Like, say, how are you? And he'd, you know... I uh, this no, you know. This no, this and no. they just if they cussed, but they can't. I mean, we would if you could, but yeah. you can't, like, say. Where do you come from? Where does he come from, I'd say. I wouldn't say, where do you come from? Like, Swansea boys, oh, where are you from? Or something like that, <laughs> you know, in the old... But, but the, uh, where are they from, the mumbers man would say, you see? But the great one in the morning, how art, boy? How art, boy, how is art? the first how thing in the morning. Sounds, sounds a bit Cornish. There were so many Cornish people came across here years ago, for some reason or other, because the tin mines were doing too well, and they brought an accent with them, which has got mixed up with the local how art, the snow, and so on. Oh, yes, there's definitely a tinge of Cornish years ago. But two things have changed. So many people coming down, but the old crowd are gone. Of course, there's a remnant of the old family. Well. I'm an out along her. Up from along. this end out, you see. Oh, and right. then there's in along us yeah. and up along us. And if you go down the edge, down to Langland and Casual, you go down backside. Oh. Gil, you confided in me that you've been here all these years and never tried an oyster. Sure. What do you think of them? Excellent. Well, I'm not uh, having much today, so I'm going to leave you mine because I've got to get over to the lifeboats. So this enjoy is one of them. The gods. This is one I of never had it so good. Never had it never. so good. Oh. Oh. Me. Oh, you were using light you? Get the, the gristle part away like yeah. this and just slide them down. Scott, how long has it been a lifeboat in Mumbles? We've had a lifeboat here at, in Swansea Bay for 150 years, and uh, it's been at Mumbles a little less than that, but in actual fact, it's not always been here at this boathouse. It was originally at the old lifeboat house, where the boat used to be kept on a carriage, and it was launched by horses. Uh, what used to happen was when the lifeboats were required that uh, they would bring horses down from any of the other work they were doing, hitch it up to this carriage and drag the lot in the water. It was a lot harder in those days to launch a lifeboat than ever it was today, and all we've got to do is knock a chain out. There's been several disasters with the last lifeboats. How safe is this boat? Uh, this lifeboat is far safer than any other lifeboat that's ever been here before. Um, with the old lifeboats, they, I mean, they were very basic open rowing boats, and uh, the last disaster that happened here at Mumbles, of course, was in 1947. Uh, there were two before that. Uh, this present, uh, this life for today, uh, is a very sophisticated thing. And uh, I would say that, yes, it is a lot safer than any of its predecessors. Are there any women in the crew? Uh, we don't have any ladies, not in this lifeboat. And why not? They do have them in other lifeboats, uh, particularly in inshore rescue boats, where the boats are, are much smaller. They're the sort of thing that Blue Peter gave us, if you might remember. How many people are there in the crew? There are six members to this particular boat, and uh, they are picked out of a squad of approximately 20. Uh, you see, because all the men are not here all the time, we have to train uh, a squad of 20 men uh, who are all trained basically as seamen, and then they do individual jobs, and when they actually come into the boathouse, I will pick out six of them that, shall we say, will dovetail nicely together. Oh, there you are. I wonder where you'd all got to. Hi, you all. Hello, Hi, Russell. Russ. Now, I can see you've been grilling Derek with a few questions there, haven't you? Yeah. Now, I've got a question for you, Derek. You call yourself a coxswain. How quickly can you get that boat into the water? It depends on how quickly you lot can get out of the way. Come on, let's guy up the gangplank. Sorry, gang, but they've invited me on, but there's not enough room for all of you. Aww. Anyway, I'll see you back at the bus later on. I'll have to go now because the boat's going to leave. I'll see you. ta -da. Well, it's about time I launched my career as a lifeboatman. Here it goes. Tom, 
what made you get involved with the lifeboats? Well, I don't know. I, about 23 years ago, I came to live in the area. I'd been to sea in the Royal Navy. I was interested in boats. I had a couple of boats myself. And I came down one morning and volunteered my services. And I've been here ever since. What happens when you receive an SOS or a May Day? Where does it go through to? Well, initially, the May Day or an SOS or a 999 telephone call would go to the Coast Guard. That's him over there, isn't it? That's right. That's the Coast Guard station over there. And they coordinate all the search and rescue for this area and from Land's End to southern Scotland. There must be quite a few dangerous places. Uh, we've got the two islands over here, and it's very rocky. Well, when you go around any of these headlands, there is a surge of water, and out there there are a group of rocks known as the Cherry Stones. They are quite dangerous. One has to know your way around, and beyond that, there's the Mixon Shoal. That, again, is quite dangerous. What's a typical rescue? I mean, is there such a thing? Are there really such things as people getting lost on lilos in the summer? Or is that just something that's put about by the oh, press? Oh, no, we, we get that. At the uh, summer season, there are incidents where people whose engines break down, for example, in the summer season. We get what we in Mumbles call, not very politely, the Birmingham sailors who come down for their weekends, you know, and uh, get into trouble. But most of that is uh, taken care of by our fast inshore rescue cars. You'll rescue anyone, really, big, small. You'll go out to any distress call, won't you? Absolutely, yes. And whatever the conditions, if uh, there is a call for help from the sea, we have to go. How does uh, the Royal National Lifeboat Institution get its money? Is it government-backed? No, it's all by voluntary contributions, all of it. So any money gratefully received from anyone watching tonight? Not only any money, but all money. All money. Yes. <laughs> Thanks a lot then, Tom. OK, thank you very much. But it was really aged. You've enjoyed yourselves. Yeah. What was your favourite bit, Chris? The castle. The castle. Good. Well, come on, you're going back to school now, everybody. Oh. And as for you lot, I'll see you next week in Bala. Ta-da!